नमस्ते माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर मिसेस प्रीति सुनील जोशी इन दिस सेशन ऑफ क्रिस्टलोग्राफी स्टूडेंट्स वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न ब्रैग्स लॉ द साइज ऑफ द यूनिट सेल एंड अरेंजमेंट ऑफ आइटम्स इन अ क्रिस्टल मे बी डिटरमाइंड फ्रॉम द मेजरमेंट्स ऑफ डिफ्रैक्शन ऑफ एक्स रेज बाय द क्रिस्टल विच इज टर्म डाइज एक्स रे क्रिस्टलोग्राफी सो डिफ्रैक्शन इज द चेंज इन द डायरेक्शन ऑफ द ट्रैवल experienced by an electromagnetic wave when it encounters a physical barrier whose dimensions are comparable to those of the wavelength of the light scientists studied minerals for hundreds of years before the discovery of x rays by the late 19th century uh, mineralogists knew that crystals had ordered and repetitive crystal structures they hypothesized about atomic arrangements and the nature of the crystal structures but they lacked direct evidence so let us start this session from the interesting discovery of x rays william dongton's discovery of x rays in 1895 allowed mineralogists to proceed with their studies and eventually led to a greater understanding of crystal structures in less than 2 decades scientists developed a firm theoretical basis for understanding how atoms are arranged in minerals today we accept without question the idea that atoms bond together in regular arrangements to make crystals we draw pictures make enlarged models and study the details of crystal structures of thousands of minerals uh, all this knowledge would have been unobtainable if rongton and his co-workers had not recognized the importance of some curious phenomena uh, they have observed while studying cathode ray tubes in 1895 in 1911 law of physics professor determined that lines in the diffraction gratings were not spaced closely enough to diffract x rays in 1912 walter friedrich and paul showed the x rays are electromagnetic waves similar to light but with much shorter wavelengths they also confirmed that crystals must have a regular crystal structure then debe and paul scherer soon improved x-ray techniques they showed that all crystals have a lattice and that lattices vary in their symmetry after that in 1913 william bragg and his son william l bragg determined the arrangement of atoms using data obtained with x-ray studies for the first time mineralogists knew the actual locations of atoms within the crystal in 1901 longton received the first nobel prize for physics then law received the same prize in 1914 and both bragg's were the recipients in 1915 just like visible light x ray propagate in all directions and may interact or interfere with each other two parallel x rays of the same wavelength can exhibit constructive interference or destructive interference if constructive it means that the wavefronts are in phase that their wave peaks coincide so in such a case wave energy is add which increases the x ray amplitude destructive interference occurs when waves are out of phase one is moving up while the other is moving down so when destructive interference occurs waves can cancel w l bragg developed a simpler mathematical treatment describing diffraction to model this reflection bragg considered two parallel planes of atoms separated by distance d now students let us see bragg's law in detail in 1912 Bragg and Bragg discovered that x-rays can be regularly reflected by the cleavage planes of the crystals. The cleavage planes are successive planes uh, in the crystal as shown in the figure here. They are also known as Bragg's planes. Thus a crystal it may be regarded as consisting of a stack of several parallel planes of atoms. 
each plane in a given set has the same distribution of atoms. When an X-ray beam is incident on the crystal, each atom in the crystal scatters a portion of the incident beam. The scattered waves travel in all directions. Now the question is, do we have to consider all these scatterings for crystal structure determination? So the answer is no. It is convenient to consider the net scatterings by atoms in terms of the diffraction by the crystal planes. Each family of planes give rise to scattering but only certain family scatters constructively in certain direction. So Bragg and Bragg derived the relation between the wavelength of X-rays and angular positions of the scattered beam and thus the separation of atomic planes in the crystal. Bragg made some simplifications regarding the diffraction of X-rays from a crystal. So the first simplification was any crystal may be viewed as a regular stack of atomic planes. Second one is the atomic planes act like semi-transparent mirrors for X-rays. As when the X-ray is incident on the crystal plane, we are getting the reflection or the scatterings in all direction. Then third one is X-rays reflected from the successive atomic planes would interfere constructively or destructively and it is dependent upon the path difference between the rays. And if the path difference is an integer multiple of wavelength, the rays interfere constructively and produce a bright spot in that direction. So Bragg derived a simple mathematical relationship that serves as a condition for Bragg's reflection to occur. And this condition is known as Bragg's law. Let us consider a set of parallel planes uh, with interplanar distance d. We represent the row of atoms in a single horizontal line. So uh, let AB is the incident beam. It is incident at an angle theta on the top plane PQ. It scatters as BC at the same angle theta. Now let us consider another beam A dash B dash incident on the plane at the same angle theta and scatters as B dash C dash. So the contributions of two adjacent atoms in the same plane are considered here. The rays BC and B dash C dash are coherent and reinforce each other if they are in phase. So for that it requires the path lengths to be equal as per the third simplification considered by Bragg. And as the path traveled by both rays is same, so they will interfere definitely constructively and maximum intensity will be seen. Means a brighter spot will be produced. This is the condition of reflection. Okay. Now next we will consider the contribution of two adjacent atoms from successive planes. Let a set of parallel beam of monochromatic X-rays AB and AB dash of wavelength lambda be incident on the plane PQ at a glancing angle theta. The incident X-rays will be reflected in all direction by the atoms. The scattered beam emerges along BC and B dash C dash. The rays BC and B dash C dash are coherent and reinforce each other if they are in phase. So again it requires the path travelled by these two rays is equal. If we observe this diagram, it is clear that path travelled by the beam scattered from the adjacent plane is more than the scattered from the top plane. So we have to calculate the extra path travelled by the beam scattered from the adjacent plane. So for that let us draw perpendiculars BE and BF on the incident ray a dash B dash and the reflected ray B dash C dash respectively. Let us consider BF is parallel to incident ray and BE is parallel to scattered ray. Then from figure we can see that the path difference between these two rays is EB dash plus B dash F. Now consider the triangles BEB dash and BF B dash. And if we calculate the value of EB dash and B dash F, then it is equal to D sin theta. 
so the path difference delta is given by e b dash plus b dash f which is equal to 2 d sin theta the rays b c and b dash c dash will constructively interfere only when delta is equal to n lambda where n is the order of diffraction the two reflected rays will be in phase with each other if the path difference is equal to integral multiple of wavelength and out of phase if it equals an odd multiple of lambda by 2 therefore the condition for reinforcement of scattered wave is 2d sin theta is equal to n lambda this equation is called bragg's equation or bragg's law so bragg's law can be stated as the x-rays reflected from parallel planes of a crystal interfere constructively when the path difference is integral multiple of wavelength of x-rays that is 2d sin theta is equal to n lambda where n is the order of diffraction when n is equal to 0 means 0th order diffraction occurs and theta must be 0 when n is equal to 1 first order diffraction occurs then when n is equal to 2 second order diffraction occurs and so on so as n increases the angle between the diffracted wavefront and the row of atoms increases the maximum value of n lambda corresponds to sin theta is equal to 1 means when theta is equal to 90 degree so n lambda must always be less than d because for n greater than or equal to 1 lambda must be less than or equal to d for diffraction to occur these limits explain why atoms in crystals do not diffract visible light the wavelengths of light are too long compared with the atomic spacings so if the value of theta is determined experimentally and knowing the wavelength lambda the interpenal spacing d can be calculated from which the lattice constant can be calculated and hence the crystal structure can be determined with the help of Bragg's law. So students, uh, this is about Bragg's law. Uh, uh, see you in the next session. Thank you so much.